Hello, and welcome to Newport Medical's E360 Ventilator Training Program. This is a two-part training program that will assist you in becoming proficient on the E360 ventilator. I am Cindy Miller, and I will be your instructor today. If you have any questions regarding setup and use of the E360, you can email or phone me anytime. My contact information is listed at the end of the program. This part will walk you through the setup and use of the E360 ventilator for any patient. Next, attach the support arm block to one of the side rails. Then attach the support arm and tubing holder. Next, we'll connect the touch screen to the T model or optional flat panel display monitor to the S, P, or E model of E360. This is very simple. You will use the same articulating arm to mount either the 15 inch external touch screen or the 17 inch external flat panel display. The first step is to attach the arm to the top of the ventilator. There are two screws that hold it securely in place. Next, attach the flat panel display or touch screen to the arm using the hardware provided with the system. After the display or touch screen are securely mounted, connect the communication cables. Both the flat panel display and the touch screen have cables that connect to the VGA port on the rear panel of E360 using a 15 pin male connector. When connecting the external touch screen to the T model, you will also need to connect the 9-pin female RS-232C cable from the external touchscreen to the COM1 port on the rear panel of the ventilator. At this time, go ahead and attach any other accessories you plan to use, like a power strip, a heated humidifier, an exhalation filter heater, or a cylinder holder. To get the ventilator ready for patient use, you will need to install the breathing circuit system. Breathing circuit system configuration requirements vary from institution to institution and from patient to patient. Your patient breathing circuit system configuration will need to match your institution's policies and individual patient needs. Let me take a minute to orient you to the layout of the tubing ports before we go over attaching the breathing circuit system. You will notice that there are labels on the tubing ports that say to patient and from patient. These labels indicate the direction of flow. So tubing going to the patient will connect to the port on the right and tubing coming from the patient will connect to the port on the left. The oxygen sensor is located just behind the two patient port and the exhalation valve and flow sensor are located just behind the from patient port. Start your breathing circuit setup by attaching filters onto the two patient and from patient ports. If you are using a heated humidifier, attach it directly to the cart or compressor. If you are also using a heated expiratory filter system, you will need to use the T-bar to mount both the humidifier and the filter system. You won't need to attach a filter onto the from patient port if you are planning to use the heated expiratory filter system. Instead, you will put an expiratory filter inside the heater assembly. Sometimes your setup will be as simple as a two-limb breathing circuit, inspiratory and expiratory filters, and an HME up at the patient connection. Other times, your setup will include a heated humidifier, heated wire circuit, and heated exhalation filter system. Here is one example of a fully assembled system. Next, we'll connect the E360 and accessories to power. The E360 can run from AC power, internal battery power, or external battery power. The flat panel display, external touchscreen, and other accessories run from AC power. Under normal use, you will plug the ventilator and accessories into AC power. AC power charges the E360's internal battery whenever E360 is plugged in and the indicator on the front panel is lit. If you have an AC power outage or need to move a patient around within the hospital, you can rely on the internal battery to run the ventilator for up to one hour. Internal battery use is indicated on the control panel and the remaining charge is indicated on the status bar of the graphical user interface screen. 
For longer time away from AC power, you can connect to an external battery. For this, you will need an external battery cable and, of course, an external battery. External battery cables are available in ringed or auto lighter style. External battery use is in. Next, we'll connect the gas supplies. The E360 ventilator is designed for use with both air and oxygen 50 psi gas supplies. But when you are ventilating at 21% oxygen, the E360 can run from an air supply with no oxygen connected. And when ventilating at 100% oxygen, the E360 can run from an oxygen supply with no air connected. We know that some climates make it very difficult to maintain completely dry air supplies. So the E360 is equipped with a larger air inlet water trap to help minimize the chances of water entering the ventilator through the air source gas line. This air inlet water trap comes equipped with manual and auto drain features. You should check the jar regularly and manually drain any accumulated water into an approved receptacle. To do this, just push up on the large pin at the bottom of the jar assembly while holding a receptacle under the trap or attach suction tubing from a bedside vacuum canister to the large pin on the bottom of the jar assembly and then push up on it. For your convenience, we also offer an optional drain kit which contains drain tubing and a drain bag so that the water that drains during the auto drain function or water that you manually drain from the system is captured in the bag. After power and gases are connected, use the power switch on the rear panel to power the ventilator on. The E360 powers on with all of the same settings that were in place when the ventilator was powered down, except the non-invasive selection that always reverts to off. Electrical accessories have their own power switches, so make sure to turn them on as well when the time is right. If you are using a heated humidifier, you will need to fill the water chamber to the appropriate level before powering it on. Remember that you can prepare the ventilator in advance of patient arrival so that it can be ready to go the second the patient arrives. While in standby condition, you can adjust patient and technical setup selections, perform the pre-use circuit check and calibrations, use quick setup to automatically adjust the ventilation and alarm settings based on ideal body weight, or manually adjust these settings. And of course, you can start ventilating. For the best ventilator performance, you should perform the circuit check and the oxygen sensor calibration each time you set up the ventilator for patient use. They are both quick and easy to do. The circuit check requires that the E360 be connected to a compressed air gas source, and the oxygen sensor calibration requires that the E360 be connected to a medical grade oxygen source. When the ventilator is powered on, it automatically goes to the circuit check screen. But if you navigate away from that screen while in the standby condition and need to get back to it, simply push the setup and calibration button on the panel and then touch the circuit check button. Before you start the circuit check, take a moment to make sure that the humidifier chamber is filled to an appropriate level and that you have a means of occluding the patient connection of the circuit. And make sure that the compressed air gas source is connected and turned on. Failing to connect a compressed air gas source will cause the circuit check to fail. Okay, let's start. For the first half of the circuit check, you will need to use a gloved hand or cap or another means to fully occlude the patient connection of the circuit. Wait until the circuit stops moving, then touch the circuit check button. If the resistance in the circuit system is very low, there won't be a second step and the circuit check results will appear on the screen. If the screen indicates the need for a second step, you will need to unblock the Y before touching circuit check to initiate that step. This quick automated function tests the breathing circuit system compliance and resistance, tests the breathing circuit system for leaks, and performs both a low flow and zero offset exhalation flow sensor calibration. The pass or fail result of the circuit check is logged in the event history. Always remember that you will get the best results from the circuit check, meaning that the measurements and calibration values will be most accurate if you fill the humidifier chamber to the fill line, turn the ventilator and humidifier on about 30 minutes before the check, and keep the tubing very still during the circuit check.
If the circuit check fails, you should check that the compressed air gas source is connected and functioning properly, and that all circuit connections are really tight. Check filters for cracks and check circuit tubing for pinholes. Be sure to check that the water traps in your circuit system are tight and that none of them are leaking. Then repeat the circuit check. If you have checked that there are no leaks in the breathing circuit and humidifier systems, and the circuit check still fails, then remove the exhalation valve assembly and check for holes in the diaphragm. As you can see, the start ventilating button is visible on all of these screens, so if necessary, you can start ventilating from any point in the ventilator setup process. Some people are tempted to skip the circuit check, even though the E360 circuit check is very short and easy to do. So why do it? Well, the ventilator gathers important information and performs important calibrations during the circuit check. The information is used to manage breath delivery, and the calibrations ensure accurate measurements and servo controlling. The circuit check has a direct impact on volume monitoring accuracy, pressure monitoring accuracy, pressure management accuracy, and the ability to compensate for compressible volume in the breathing circuit. The next step is sensor calibration you must have oxygen connected to the ventilator in order to perform the oxygen sensor calibration. Low flow and zero offset flow sensor calibrations are both performed during the circuit check. So if you have already performed and passed a circuit check, you don't need to do a flow sensor cal during setup, only an oxygen sensor cal. Just touch the sensors menu button, then touch the O2 sensor button to initiate the calibration. The sensor is also calibrated any time the O2 3-minute button is pressed. You can calibrate the oxygen sensor any time during standby condition or while ventilating, but you should keep in mind that 100% oxygen is delivered through the breathing circuit throughout the calibration period. So if your patient is being ventilated during the calibration, they will breathe 100% oxygen for up to three minutes. The pass or fail result of the O2 sensor calibration is logged in the event history. Even though you won't be doing the flow sensor cal at startup, let's go through the process so you know how to do it. Enter the sensor screen just as you did when accessing the O2 sensor cal. Touch the flow sensor button, then touch calibrate to start the calibration process. The message display will indicate if the sensor passed or failed the calibration. If it passes, touch exit. Should the sensor cal fail repeatedly when the cal is performed according to directions, you will need to change the flow sensor. If the ventilator is in use, provide alternate ventilation to the patient. Then follow these steps. Open the front panel door on the left lower front of the ventilator to expose the exhalation valve and flow sensor. If you find that it makes it easier for you to access the flow sensor, you can remove the exhalation valve from the body of the ventilator first by releasing the retaining latch. Pull the plastic flow sensor away from the outlet of the exhalation valve. Then disconnect the flow sensor cable from the plastic body of the sensor by pulling the cable straight out. Make sure you don't twist it. You can reinstall the sensor by doing the same steps in reverse. When you reconnect the cable to the sensor body, make certain that you line up the sensor port to the notch in the cable connector, then press them together. Make sure that you do not twist while connecting the cable to the sensor. The pass-fail result is logged in the event history. You should also perform the circuit check after installing a new flow sensor. The next step in preparing the 360 for patient use is to select the patient's setup parameters. From the Setup and Calibration menu, select Patient Setup. A new screen appears that allows you to customize patient settings. Patient setup parameters may be adjusted at any time while in standby or during ventilation. The first step is to select the patient type. The patient selection is indicated in the top left corner of the E360 status bar, so it is always visible when the ventilator is powered on. Always make sure to check that the selection is appropriate. You should select PED infant patient category when ventilating pediatric and infant patients with 15, 12, or 10 millimeter ID breathing circuits, 
and select Adult category when ventilating adults using a 22 millimeter ID circuit. The patient setting impacts ventilation and alarm setting ranges and ventilation management algorithms. If you change this setting while ventilating and an alarm or ventilation setting is out of range for the new patient category, the alarms and messages display shows which setting is out of range and the LED displays for the parameters that are out of range flash. After 10 seconds, an audible alarm sounds. The next step is to select weight units and weight. If you intend to use the quick setup function for determining startup ventilation alarm settings, you will need to enter the patient's ideal body weight, which is calculated from their height and gender, and select the weight units in pounds or kilograms. If you do not intend to use the quick setup function, you can skip this step. If you have entered an ideal body weight, you can also choose to display exhaled tidal volume numeric displays in mLs per kilogram instead of mLs. Next, set the psi function on or off. The psi function gives a psi breath every 100 mandatory volume control breaths. The psi tidal volume is 1.5 times the set tidal volume. Next, select the circuit type. There are four selections for circuit type. Make sure your selection matches your breathing circuit and humidifier setup so that the E360 can appropriately correct for temperature and humidity in the patient exhaled gases. Select heated expiratory limb when using a heated humidifier with a dual heated wire breathing circuit. Select heated inspiratory limb when using a heated humidifier with no heated wire on the expiratory limb of the circuit whether or not you have a heated inspiratory wire on the inspiratory limb. Select HME when using a heat moisture exchanger instead of a heated humidifier. And use test lung for demonstrating and testing the ventilator when it is connected to a test lung. The next setting is leak compensation. It can be set to on or off. We recommend that you always keep leak compensation turned on. When leak compensation is on, the E360 automatically adjusts the leak compensating bias flow between 3 and 8 liters per minute for peat infant patient selection and between 3 and 15 liters per minute for the adult patient selection in order to maintain an end expiratory base flow of 3 liters per minute. Leak compensation can enhance patient trigger reliability because it can significantly reduce the chances of auto-triggering in spite of varying airway and circuit system leaks. The E360 ventilator automatically coordinates the flow trigger relationship to leak compensation flow, so there is no need to readjust the flow trigger when a leak changes. This makes this system virtually hands-free in spite of a changing leak. And finally, set the compliance compensation to on or off. When compliance compensation is turned on, the ventilator automatically compensates for delivered volume loss due to breathing circuit compressibility during every volume controlled mandatory breath using the compliance compensation factor that was measured during the most recent circuit check. The next menu item is the quick setup function. Quick setup selects default ventilation and alarm parameter settings based on your entry of the patient's ideal body weight and mode and breath type preference. Using quick setup is a great way for less experienced caregivers to select safe new patient startup settings and for all caregivers to speed up the setup process. The quick setup function is only available while in standby. We are covering quick setup at a point in our setup process when gases are already connected to the E360 but you can power the ventilator on and activate the quick setup without any gases connected to the ventilator as well. Remember that all ventilator settings except the non-invasive setting are stored in memory when the unit is powered down. The first step in the quick setup process is to confirm that the settings for patient type, ideal weight, and weight units are correct, and if not, to correct them and then press accept to confirm the changes. Next, you will select a mode and breath type combination. There are nine combinations of mode and breath type selections available. There are a couple of things you should know. The volume control spot and the pressure control spot modes do exactly the same thing. And when you select PCACMV or PCSIMV, the open exhalation feature defaults to on, 
So when you start ventilating, the breath type mode indicator at the top of the screen will display BPRV instead of PC. Next, touch Implement Quick Setup to activate the function. At this point, E360 will automatically adjust all ventilation and alarm settings to software defaults based on the patient type, weight, and mode you selected. The screen will automatically change back to the circuit check screen, which shows the Start Ventilating button. The new Startup Ventilator settings will take effect when the Start Ventilating button is touched. If you touch the Exit button instead of the Implement Quick Setup, you will stop the quick setup without establishing new ventilator settings. You should check and, if necessary, readjust any ventilation or alarm settings that do not meet your clinical goals for the patient before connecting the ventilator to the patient. To check alarm settings, just press the Alarms button on the control panel. On the alarm screen, you will find all user set alarm limits, the button for accessing alarm history, the alarm loudness setting, and the alarm's tone selection setting. Remember that the ventilator remains in standby until start ventilating is touched. When you set up the E360 for the first time, you will need to go to the technical screen to set up the parameters found there. So let's walk through your first time setup. Remember that these settings can be checked and if necessary, readjusted at any time during standby or ventilating condition. Use the Communication Protocol button to select the RS-232 communication protocol that corresponds with the monitoring system that is connected to the E360 ventilator. Touch the button to select New Port, New Port 2, or View Link. Touch Regional Settings and then set Altitude, Language, and Pressure Units. Touch appropriate buttons for adjusting date format and date and time as needed. Touch screen files for accessing and downloading stored screen images to a flash drive. Touch event history files for accessing and download stored event history logs to a flash drive. Then use the display brightness button to access the display brightness adjustment screen and adjust it to give you the best visibility. After your first setup, you will only visit this screen to adjust screen brightness, download image or event history files to a flash drive, and if you are using the T model, to turn on the PV maneuver function. You can adjust technical settings and download files at any time during standby or while ventilating, but you must be ventilating in order to turn on the PV maneuver. To exit this screen, you just need to touch the data sets button in the lower right hand corner or press a control panel menu button. Now we'll go through the basics of manually selecting ventilation settings. Remember that you can touch the Start Ventilating button at any time to start ventilation. Volume Control and Pressure Control Breath Type Activator buttons are located on the Control Panel, and Volume Target Pressure Control and Biphasic Pressure Release are activated using touch controls in the Advanced Data Set on the Graphical User Interface. A360 ventilator controls are adjusted using the Touch Turn Accept method I described earlier but a couple of controls function a little differently. The trigger control is used to adjust either flow triggering or pressure triggering. You will use the trigger selector, which is found above the numeric display, to select either pressure or flow for triggering. Then press Accept to confirm the selection. After selecting the trigger method, press the button below the numeric value to select the value for adjustment. From this point on, it uses the standard Touch Turn Accept method. Flow and inspiratory time also share a display. When you are using pressure-based mandatory breaths, the display is always set for inspiratory time. But when you are using volume control mandatory breath type, you can use the selector button located above the numeric display to determine which value will be displayed in the window and available for adjustment. Then, just like with the trigger control, you push the button below the numeric display to select it for adjustment turn the adjustment knob to the desired value, and press Accept to implement the change. The non-invasive function also works a little differently. It toggles on and off. Just press the button to toggle it on or off, then press Accept to confirm and implement the change. When you are ready to start ventilating, touch the Start Ventilating button. Let's practice setting up different breath types and modes. You will notice that the E360 indicates which GUI controls are inactive by graying them out. 
and which control panel settings are inactive by dimming them. As a rule of thumb, always check the settings of all controls that are not grayed or dimmed to make certain they meet your patient's clinical needs. Then make sure the grayed and dimmed settings are at safe values. We'll start with volume control ACMV. Set the breath type mode selector to volume control ACMV. You do this by pressing the volume control button until ACMV is lit, then pressing accept. When you are ventilating, you will see that the breath type and mode is displayed in the upper left corner of the GUI. This means that it will appear in the screens that you save and download as well. Use the touch turn accept method for all other settings. Set FiO2, set tidal volume, set either flow or inspiratory time. Remember that you will use the select button to choose which one you want to set. Set respiratory rate, set PEEP CPAP, set trigger to flow or pressure, then adjust the setting. Then go to the GUI and set these settings. Set the flow wave to square or descending ramp for the volume control breaths. Set pause and set the sigh. Now let's set the alarm limits. We won't cover the alarm setting function for each mode and breath type, but let's go over it just this once. Touch the alarm screen button to open the alarm screen. While ventilating, the monitored value for peak airway pressure, expiratory minute volume, total respiratory rate, and percent VTE variance are shown just to the left of the alarm settings so that you have a point of reference. When setting alarm limits before you start ventilating, just pick safe values first, then go back and tailor them to match your individual situation after you start ventilating the patient. Set the high and low minute volume alarms to bracket the patient's exhaled minute volume. Set the high and low airway pressure alarms to bracket the patient's peak pressure. Set the high respiratory rate alarm just above the maximum acceptable total respiratory rate. Set the apnea alarm at the maximum time allowable between breaths and set the disconnect threshold alarm at the level of difference between the inspiratory and expiratory tidal volume that you wish the ventilator to use for declaring a circuit disconnect. Okay, now if you want to change from volume control ACMV to volume control SIMV, just press the volume control button until volume control SIMV is lit then press accept. In addition to the mandatory breath settings, you will need to set spontaneous breath settings. The pressure support control determines how spontaneous breaths are supported. Set the pressure support control to deliver the desired level of support above PEEP. And then set slope rise and expiratory threshold on the GUI screen. Remember that those of you with P, E, and T models can set these two parameters to auto so that E360's intelligent control system will manage them for you breath by breath. Remember to check and if necessary change the alarm settings whenever you change ventilation parameter settings. Next, we'll switch to pressure control ACMV. Just push the pressure control button until pressure control ACMV is lit on the control panel, then press accept. Notice that the pressure limit display lights up and the tidal volume display goes dim but otherwise many of the same settings like FiO2, respiratory rate, PEEP and trigger are still lit and therefore need to be set. Set the inspiratory time. Set the pressure limit at the desired target pressure level above ambient. Remember, pressure limit sets a target pressure above ambient pressure. The peak pressure will not change if you change PEEP. This is opposite from pressure support which sets a target change in pressure above PEEP. On the GUI screen, you will notice that the expiratory threshold is now dim, since there are no spontaneous breaths in ACMV. But slope rise is still active, since this control impacts the rise of pressure during the onset of all pressure breaths, including the mandatory pressure control breaths. Don't forget to check alarm limits after every breath parameter change. Now let's switch to pressure control SIMV. Set pressure control SIMV on the control panel. Then 
Just like with volume control SIMB, you will need to set the pressure support, the slope rise, and the expiratory threshold. The slope rise that is set will apply to both the pressure control and the pressure support breaths. We abbreviate this as BPRV. It is called bilevel or BiPAP or APRV on other products. Simply set the ventilator up for pressure control ACMV or SIMV. Then turn on the open exhalation setting in the advanced data set. You will have to make sure volume target is off. You will see that all of the same settings that were available in pressure control are still available in BPRV. But you will think of some of these settings a little differently now. You will set inspiratory time in the same way you would set T high or timed insp on another product. You will set respiratory rate to determine expiratory time or T low. Set pressure limit in the same way you would set P high or IPAP and set PEEP in the same way you would set P low or EPAP. As with regular pressure control breaths, slope rise determines the assertiveness of the pressure rise at the onset of the breath and the inspiratory time determines the duration of time that pressure is held at the pressure control level. The difference is that with pressure release breaths, the patient may breathe in or out at any time while pressure is maintained at the pressure control level. The other advanced breath type is volume target pressure control, which we abbreviate as VTPC. This is available in ACMV and SIMV modes, and there is a spontaneous version that's available in SIMV and SPONT modes. Volume target pressure control allows the ventilator to deliver the therapeutically selected tidal volume with a physiologically responsive flow while managing pressure delivery to the lowest pressure possible. This breath type is very easy to set up. For volume target pressure control ACMV, set pressure control or volume control ACMV on the control panel. Then set volume target on in the advanced data set. Notice that both the pressure control and volume control breath type indicators light up and both the pressure limit and the tidal volume displays light up. The tidal volume setting determines a target value for volume delivery and the ventilator servo controls the pressure control level in order to deliver that set tidal volume. The pressure limit is the maximum pressure that the ventilator will use in order to attain that tidal volume. So you need to set the pressure limit at the maximum target pressure above ambient that is acceptable for the patient. Also note that the open exhalation function is not available when you turn on volume target. You need to turn off volume target if you wish to use the open exhalation valve BPRV function. When using the VTPC breath type, there is an additional alarm. It is called the volume target not met alarm. If this alarm occurs, it means that your settings will not allow the ventilator to deliver the set tidal volume within the pressure limit you have set. Your first response to this alarm should be to ensure that the circuit and expiratory filter are not imposing expiratory resistance. Then take all necessary steps to improve volume delivery by adjusting the PEEP, slope rise, inspiratory time, expiratory threshold, and respiratory rate levels. If none of those adjustments resolve the alarm violation, you may need to increase the amount of pressure change you allow for the volume to be delivered or decrease the tidal volume setting to resolve it. When you change to volume target pressure control SIMV, both the mandatory pressure controlled breaths and the spontaneous pressure support breaths are volume targeted breaths that are delivered at the lowest possible pressure. You will notice that the pressure support setting is dimmed. That's because the pressure support setting does not manage the pressure support level in this breath type. Instead, it is managed by the ventilator, and the ventilator uses the pressure limit setting to determine the maximum pressure it will use for all breaths, both mandatory and spontaneous. The peak pressure for the mandatory breaths may be different than the peak pressures of the spontaneous breaths, because mandatory and spontaneous breaths are handled individually. The inspiratory time setting determines the duration for the mandatory breaths and the expiratory threshold setting determines the duration for the spontaneous breaths. 
The slope rise setting applies to both the mandatory and spontaneous breaths. Now let's talk about the spot mode. When you want to use the standard spot mode with pressure support, make sure volume target is turned off in the advanced data set. Then push either the volume control or pressure control breath type button until spot lights up. It doesn't matter whether you choose volume control or pressure control spot mode, the end result will be the same. As with all other modes and breath types, make sure to set all parameters on the control panel and GUI that are not dimmed or grayed out, and also check the alarm settings. On the other hand, if you want to use volume target pressure support rather than standard pressure support, choose either the volume control or pressure control spot mode and make sure that volume target is turned on in the advanced data set. In this case, the pressure support control will not be active and you will set the pressure limit as the maximum pressure level that the ventilator will target for each pressure support breath. Remember that in this breath type, the ventilator will choose the lowest pressure support level that will achieve the tidal volume you set. Okay, now that we've gone through the basics of setting up the full spectrum of mode and breath types, let's talk a little about using non-invasive ventilation. The non-invasive button is a toggle function. Just toggle it on, the LED will light, and press accept to turn on the function. When NIV is activated, performance, ventilation options, and alarm selections are tailored to meet the needs of a patient who is breathing from a mask or nasal prongs. The leak compensation flow range is expanded to 25 liters per minute for both the peat infant and the adult patient categories. The automatic slope rise management for all pressure-based breaths is more assertive to accommodate the higher spontaneous breathing flows of a person who is ventilated by mask. The trigger function is adapted to minimize auto-triggering from a leak, and the low minute volume alarm and disconnect threshold alarms may be set to the off position. All modes and breath types are available. The NIV setting always reverts to off when the E360 is powered down. There are two commonly used controls that are found on the control panel in the left lower corner. They are the manual inflation button and O2-3 minute button. To perform a manual inflation, push and hold the manual inflation button, then release the button to end inspiration and allow exhalation. To initiate a 3-minute O2 function, which delivers 100% oxygen to the patient for 3 minutes, just push the button. This button has a toggle function. To end the 100% O2 delivery before 3 minutes have elapsed, you can push it again. It is lit when active. The E360 ventilator provides you with a full spectrum of pulmonary mechanics measurements. The values include total PEEP, static compliance, effective dynamic compliance, inspiratory resistance, expiratory resistance, rapid shallow breathing index, time constant, and imposed work of breathing. On the T model, you can also obtain a quasi-static pressure volume curve for assessing recruitability and the lower inflection point. You can view all but the quasi-static pressure volume curve information on the numeric screen also on the data subsets that are displayed along the lower margin of the GUI. Touch the data set button to scroll through the four sets. The mechanics values that are based on the inspiratory and expiratory hold maneuvers are displayed with a military timestamp beneath the numeric value. The value is retained for up to 24 hours or until they are replaced with a new value, whichever comes first. When you perform a hold maneuver, make certain that the patient's respiratory drive is suppressed and that there are no active breathing efforts. If the patient is actively breathing during these maneuvers, the measured values will be skewed. Here is the process for doing the end expiratory and end inspiratory hold maneuvers. Touch the extended functions button. Then touch and hold the expiratory hold button and continue holding until past when the next breath is due to begin. Then let go. During the hold, gas flow to the patient is postponed while the exhalation valve is held closed. The airway opening and alveolar pressure is equilibrate as the end expiratory state is prolonged. If patient exhalation is passive and the expiratory phase is held until a quasi-steady pressure is achieved, the circuit pressure measurement will provide a reasonable estimate 
of the average alveolar pressure. Automatically, this end expiratory P base pressure is logged to the E360 screen as total PEEP. The time at which it was collected is recorded in military style. The total PEEP value is also used in the calculation of static compliance, which is labeled C stat. After performing an expiratory hold, it is a good idea to allow the patient to rest for a few minutes before performing an inspiratory hold. Next, Touch and hold the inspiratory hold button during inspiration and continue holding until past when the breath is completed and you see pressure equilibrate on the pressure waveform, then let go. During an inspiratory hold, no flow is delivered and gas is prevented from exiting the patient's lungs. The airway opening and alveolar pressures equilibrate. If patient exhalation is passive and the inspiratory phase is held until a quasi-steady pressure is achieved, the circuit pressure will provide a reasonable estimate of the alveolar pressure. When an inspiratory hold is performed, the E360 measures the plateau pressure, then performs mathematical calculations for resistance and compliance. Inspiratory resistance is only calculated if the breath was a mandatory volume control breath with a square flow waveform and static compliance is only calculated if the breath was a time-triggered breath rather than being triggered by the patient. Because you already performed the end expiratory hold, the C-STAT measurement will be based on total PEEP. The PV maneuver is used for inflating the lung in a very slow manner in order to create a quasi-static pressure volume curve that is used for assessing the recruitability of the lung and the proper PEEP level. Before performing the maneuver, you should prepare the ventilator. Review the high pressure alarm setting to determine that it is at a safe level. If you change it for the maneuver, ensure that it is changed back afterwards. Ensure that A360 is not in the spot mode. Confirm that E360 is set at the desired starting PEEP level. And ensure that the respiratory rate is set low enough for there to be a long exhalation phase just before starting the maneuver in order to avoid air trapping. Before you start a PV maneuver, you should also make certain of the following points. The patient must be completely relaxed and in passive ventilation. The tube cuff must be inflated with no leak present. The patient must be hemodynamically stable. There cannot be any contraindication for the transient hypercapnia that will likely result from slowing ventilation during the maneuver. And appropriate oxygenation monitoring must be in place. To use this function, you will enter the setup and calibration screen, touch technical, then turn on the maneuver using the touch turn accept method. While the function is active, you can depress the manual inflation button to deliver a slow manual inflation. The pressure volume curve will be drawn on the screen during the maneuver, and the screen will freeze afterwards so that you can take your time to assess the results. The E360 PV maneuver automatically terminates when the manual inflation button is released, airway pressure reaches 60 centimeters of water millibar, the high pressure alarm limit is violated, or 90 seconds elapse. After completing the PV maneuver and before assessing the results, it is important that you return all ventilator settings to appropriate levels if they were changed before the maneuver. Also, return the tube cuff to normal inflation value. Now, use the adjustment knob to set the cursor to the inflection point, and then touch Save to store the screen image. When you assess the PV curve, you will likely look at how wide or big the difference is between the inspiratory and expiratory limbs. This is called hysteresis and is used for predicting the potential success of a recruitment maneuver. 
The other aspect of this curve that you may find helpful is the lower inflection point. It can be valuable for determining the appropriate PEEP level for maximizing volume delivery with the least injury. After you have saved the screen to memory, it's very simple to download the screen image of the curve to a flash drive so that you can view it on a computer screen. Press the Setup and Calibration button on the control panel, touch the Technical button on the GUI, and then touch the Screen Files button. A scrollable table of the corresponding save files will appear. Install a USB flash drive version 2.0 or later into the USB port on the back of the ventilator, and then using the adjustment knob, highlight the file you want to download and touch the download button. Here are some reference articles that you may find useful in your study of pulmonary mechanics. That concludes our setup and use program for E360.